In section 2.3, we are going to actually be focusing primarily on deductive reasoning. Um, and actually, we're not actually going to see this until tomorrow. We're going to spend two days on this lesson. Um, today is going to be more um, using concepts that we've been focusing in the last section. Um, all the if-then statements, conditional, converse, that's going to be our main focus. But we're going to see it in a different light. Tomorrow, we're going to throw in more of those kind of things, but we're going to add in what this idea of deductive reasoning is. And deductive reasoning is, is going to be a big idea when we get to proof. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, now, what we're going to do today, because of the fact that we are mathematicians, a lot of things are sim in, represented in symbols. So we're going to be using symbolic notation to represent all our if-then statements that we've been talking about. We are still going to have to write some words in our sentences that we've been doing lately. Um, but now we're going to have some see some things in symbolically so we can also interpret it differently. Um, to start with, I just have just this random conditional statement. Um, Mr. Hokraby, which part of this conditional statement is considered the hypothesis? Well, the hypothesis is always what's after the if. So it is raining. That's our hypothesis. All right, it so is raining. That's your hypothesis. And the conclusion? There are clouds in the sky. Because, right, we leave off the words if and then. Perfect. So something to kind of notice here is it's just a refresher. Nothing so far we've talked about is new. No. Yeah, we've done that. Before. Okay. Now, what's new is this idea of symbolic notation. Symbolic notation basically, of course, is using symbols. And a lot of times in math, we use variables to represent something. So notice they're using the letter P, the lowercase p, for the hypothesis. Okay. The Q is the conclusion. Now, these are just some letters they came up with. I don't know where they came up with the P and Q, but that's just, just universal here. So if you look back at your sentence here, it is raining is considered, this part is your P, your hypothesis, there are clouds in the sky is your Q. Okay. So if I kind of get rid of those places, pieces, because every conditional statement is going to have a hypothesis and conclusion. They're going to be different words. The, what stays constant is the if and the then. So it would say if, P, then Q. However, is this truly symbolic? No. Well, no, because they're still, like, if and then are still words. Yeah. So, But, man, that's way shorter than having to write out all those words. Yes. Which we're still going to have to write out words. Sorry, Mrs. Okay, McGrady. okay. So if I was truly making this written symbolically, what you're going to have, you're going to have another symbol in it. I'm going to show you. I'm going to write it out. It says, it's going to say P. This is your hypothesis, which you start with. Then you're going to have this little arrow pointing this way and Q. Oh, so almost like if I have P, then I can get to Q. Yeah. That makes sense. It's saying this, then that. Now, there, the word we're going to use for this arrow is implies. So we're going to say P implies Q. Okay. In that order. Makes sense? Makes sense. So let's take a look at it. I've got a conditional statement up here. It says, if two angles are vertical angles, then their sides form two pairs of opposite rays, which we've talked about this before. That was that definition of vertical angles, knowing that their sides form two pairs of opposite rays. So, first of all, what is the P part of this statement and what is the Q? What is the hypothesis and what is the conclusion? The hypothesis in this one would be two angles are vertical angles. So, basically, you're given we have some vertical angles. Uh-huh. And then what would be the conclusion, the Q? Uh, their sides form two pairs of opposite rays. Wonderful. So, again, symbolically, we would say P implies Q. And that symbolically, P implies Q, works for symbolically for any conditional statement, for every right? conditional and statement. And basically, what changes is just the hypothesis and conclusion for each. Right. Now, we've written converses before. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the converse. If I flip the order here, what would this look like? If uh, their side. So it would be if... Two angle, wait, let me think. How would that word? You need some help here. <laughs> well, we know when we say there. That would be the vertical angles, right? There we go. Okay. Sometimes when you have that pronoun, you got to think about it. Yeah, What's what is there? it talking about? All right. So if vertical angles sides form two pairs of opposite rays, then 
No. So we probably don't want the word vertical. No. Hmm. Because the vertical is important for that, what is now the... That's true. Vertical angles wasn't even in the... Hypo- or in the conclusion. Right. So th- there means the angle side. So if two angle sides form two pairs of opposite rays, then they are vertical angles. Sounds great. So if the sides of two angles form two pairs of opposite rays, then they are vertical angles. That's great. Now, symbolically, how do you think I'm going to write this one? Well, because P then Q is the conditional statement, so I don't want to write P then Q. Even though this is, I have a new hypothesis and new conclusion, it's different than my conditional statement. So if I switch the if uh, the hypothesis and conclusion around, that means I would have to switch the P and the Q, right? Right. So it would be Q implies P or P, Q then P. Yeah. So we could say either if Q then P or Q implies P. Perfect. All right, now, so we've got our two statements. Now we need to, when we think of the inverse, start throwing in some of those words that mean not. Okay. Okay, that negate. And we're negating the conditional. Yes. All right, so if two angles are not vertical angles, then their sides do not form two pairs of opposite rays. That is awesome, exactly. So just remembering again, that inverse starts to negate, so we use those not words to negate the conditional statement. Now, symbolically, Here's one. The other day we mentioned that we were going to, the negation symbol. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we said we weren't using it yet, but we're going to use this soon. We're going to use it today. There's Do you remember what that negation symbol was? It was like a little squiggly, right? Exactly. So, so we're going to say. It will be the squiggly and the P and then the arrow and then the squiggly and the Q. Awesome. Because, again, it's negating the conditional statement. So I'm going to have that P implies Q idea, but it's not. P implies not Q. Okay, Oops, didn't mean to do that. Now, what about the contrapositive? All right, contrapositive, you negated the converse. Yes, and if it helps, let's pull back yeah, the converse I for a second. Yeah, I think that would help, because I had a hard time with the converse, if you remember. <laughs> All right, so the converse says, if the sides of two angles form two Okay, so if the sides of two angles do not form two pairs of opposite rays, then they are not vertical angles. That's awesome. Now, for symbols, this negates the converse. Right. So the converse was our Q, Q implies P. So we're going to throw in the little not symbol, that squiggly, exactly. in front of the Q and the P. So we're going to write this as a not neg- Q yeah, negating Q implies, implies not. negating P. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Now, what about the biconditional statement? So we want to put together which two things? The converse and the conditional. And we can do that because of the fact that both of those are true statements. Right. And this is the definition of a vertical angle. Which you mentioned And earlier. definitions we know can are, make by conditional. Yeah, okay. We can so the way to do that, and I, I don't know. We start with which one? Here. We're going to look at the conditional. We're going to look at the conditional statement. I'm going to mark out the if, and I'm going to mark out the then, and in replace of the then, I'm going to put if and only if. So it's going to read, two angles are vertical angles if and only if their sides form two pairs of opposite rays. Perfect. And that's exactly what we've got here. Now, the symbols on this one will be a little bit different because now, notice that I don't want to write P implies Q and Q implies P. That's not really making it simpler. So we want to go ahead and just write that instead of just P implies Q and Q implies P, that we're going to write it together and say, then P does imply Q and Q implies P. We can oh, write it with one double arrow headed arrow. That makes sense because a biconditional is a combination mm-hmm. of those two. So it would be a combination of the two symbolic forms. Exactly. 